Create This Book is an awesome creative prompt book that has been around for years. Its creator, the fabulous Mariah Elizabeth, took YouTube by storm with her book over eight years ago and it has spawned several more books since. I have my very own limited Create This Book 2 playlist, but there are lots of other fabulous artists on YouTube who have various Create This Book series. I love watching them all as they come up with ingenious creative ideas and make beautiful artwork. So I thought why not celebrate the release of Create This Book 3 by working with other YouTube artists and making one ultimate collaborative Create This Book 3 series. It's starting here with me and I hope you will follow the journey of this one little book as it travels around the world because you just never know where it might end up. Let's get it started by decorating the cover and because this is going to be a very special book, I'm going to plan it out on my iPad first. For the design that will cover the front and back of the book, I recycle some of my drawings I've done previously on my iPad. I just copy the little pictures of the art tools and paste them onto this image of a blank Create This Book 3 cover. Planning out what I want to do on my iPad before committing anything to paint and ink reduces my stress a lot. Plus, I can play around with the colour palettes quickly and easily. Once the images are placed how I like them, I play around with dripping tight paint wavy lines for the background. When I'm happy enough, I print out the art tools. I'm happy to say I have finally purchased some transfer paper and I put it to good use to transfer my design onto the cover of the book. There might be a small chance I used the paper back to front, but it worked out in the end. To bring this design to life, I'm going to use some new acrylic markers that Artex kindly gifted me. They are the SimpTap brush markers and after seeing some other art YouTubers use them, I'm excited to be testing them out. This is a pack of 24 markers and the big difference between these and other acrylic brush markers I have is these have the all important ball bearing to mix the paint. So you shake them like a normal paint marker but instead of pumping the tip to get the paint flowing, you just press the plunger on the opposite end two or three times, then wait while the paint blows to the tip. I found the prep for these pens really easy and fast. I like the colours included and the opaqueness on paper is good. All except the white. I'm not a fan of the white. Artex also sent me a 32 set of dual tip acrylic markers. These don't have the ball bearing for the paint so they have no prep and you just draw with them. They have the brush tip on one end and fine on the other. I really like the colours, but the paint is very different to the SimpTap markers. But I'll talk more about these as we go through the artwork. With all these markers and all my swatches, I'm ready to get my colours decided on. I'm going to go for the SimpTap markers first where I can, then I'll use the dual tips plus any other paint pens I have in my collection for any other colours I might need. I use my trusty colour cube cards to help me pick a colour palette and I settle on this set of six sunset colours. Then I go through and find the best colour matches. I won't be mixing any paint to get a perfect match. I'm just going for the closest colours I have. I ended up with three SimpTap, two of the dual tips and one Posca. But this selection will change during the colouring process and you'll see why later. Before I started that colour background, I actually painted over the art tool images using a white Posca pen to get rid of any black line work. The art tools will remain white with a black outline while all the colour will be the drippy paint stuff. That blue at the SimpTap marker was so opaque and the pen was really nice to use. But then I switched to the dual tip markers for the purple. And this is where I saw a big difference in the paint. On paper, the dual tip seemed to work fine. But on the plasticky type material of the book, it looked very different. Not as opaque and not very even. You can easily see it compared to the blue and pink of the SimpTap markers on either side of it. Once I had the first coat down of all the colours, I went in for the second. But I switched out the dual tip pens for the SimpTap markers instead. The colours weren't exactly what I was after, but the paint in the SimpTap is far superior. And as I went over that first layer of paint from the dual tips, the brush markers ripped off the paint and I had to keep wiping the build up off of the marker. It was a bit frustrating and made it look really patchy, but a third coat over those areas evened it all out. Once I'd learnt that the dual tip markers are no good on this surface, but the SimpTap are awesome, the rest of the cover went smoothly.
Once I had done two coats front and back, I use a fine tip black Posca to do the outline of the art tools. I am not using the brush tips for this, as I've learnt from past experience that trying to get a nice, even, fine line with a brush tip, especially with these shaky old hands, is not a good idea. Posca is the best option I have, and even then, I still make some errors that I need to go back in and fix, and I really just don't have the steadiest hands, which always makes line work difficult. I think that's why I quite like digital art, as I can adjust the pen stability to help reduce my wobbliness. The problem I found working digitally is it has made me obsess over making the line work perfect. And this can be very, what's the word I'm looking for? Stalling? Like it makes me stall and sometimes stop completely. It's even affecting me when I sketch. If I sketch on my iPad, I constantly hit undo. And now when I sketch with a pencil, I constantly use the eraser. So recently, as a way to help me stop chasing that perfect line and stop obsessing over every little mark I make on the page, I've started sketching in pen. And it's rather freeing and a great way to practice. I have to accept what I've done as I can't undo it or erase it. So if you have this problem too, I highly recommend in a cheap sketchbook or even a notebook or random paper, try sketching in pen. Anyway, with the line work done, I use some packing tape to keep the design safe. With this book travelling a long way and passing through many hands, packing tape seems like the most robust option to withstand lots of use. Not the prettiest, but definitely the safest. With the cover all done, I can dive into the book. First, I need to sign the page. By Mariah Elizabeth and Di. Plus, there's plenty of room on this page for the 50 other artists. Then the starting date. I wonder what the end date's gonna be because it's gonna be a very long project. Now I get to choose my prompt. Create a swarm. Draw a swarm of bugs, give them a purpose. Like with the cover, I sketch out my design on my iPad, then print it out, and using my light up tracing pad, I pencil the design onto some suitable paper. I then use a kneadable eraser to lighten the line work, and I opt to use the Artex dual tip markers. I want to use these to get the base colour down. Even though they didn't work so great on the plasticky cover of the book, my swatches earlier told me they work fine on paper. Then I hope to go back in with pencils for the details. Now, as I said, Artex gifted me these markers, but that doesn't mean I feel obligated to be kind. I've had a few brands approach me about testing their art supplies over the past year, but I've not taken any up on their offer until now. I don't mind honestly reviewing stuff, but unless I feel confident that I will like something, I do try to avoid it. So when I saw another YouTuber using the SimTap markers, I took a chance and requested these markers for myself. And I'm glad I did. I really love the SimTap. So much so, I'm gonna purchase a set for a friend. If you wanna know my full thoughts on the SimTap and the dual tip markers, I'll include a bit more info in my description. So let's talk about this artwork. The prompt said, create a swarm and give them a purpose. So as you can see, I've created a swarm of bees, plus some of my signature mushroom characters. Over having a picnic in the background is Groovy, the yellow-topped dancing shroom. Bub, the baby of the group, is pink, and the blue guy is Grub, the mushy who makes a mess with everything he eats. In this case, he's snacking on the honey from the bees. All the bees are busy doing their job making honey. Because that's what bees do, right? Except for one bee, Bonnie. Bonnie the bee is here hanging out with a mushroom you don't know yet. This little shroom's name is Lil. She's a sweet shroom with a lot of love to give. But Lil struggles sometimes. As much as she loves her shroomy friends, sometimes they get a little much for her. All of the big wide world gets a little much for Lil. The movement of the trees, the sounds of the bees, the emotions of her friends, it can all just get a little too much. Her friends understand and they still invite her to every outing, like this picnic they organised. And even though Lil wants to be there, it just gets a bit much. That's where Bonnie comes in. You see, Bonnie is Lil's support bee. Bonnie was raised to be a honeybee, but she never shone as a honeybee. Her true calling and the place she was meant to be was as an emotional support bee. She just has a knack for sensing when little shrooms are not coping with the sensory overload of the world, and she knows what to do. 
One day, as Lil was in sensory overload, she was crying, screaming, and in real distress. Bonnie quietly flew over, sat calmly, and looked at Lil. Bonnie didn't do anything, just sat and looked while making a quiet buzzing noise and wagging her fuzzy little stinger. Lil saw Bonnie sitting there all fluffy and calm and she reached out her little shroomy hand and Bonnie inched closer again, eventually resting her sweet little head in Lil's lap. Then closer still, she crawled into Lil's arms. And Lil latched onto Bonnie the bee, hugging her as tightly as she could. Holding on for dear life, Lil felt the calming buzz of the bee through her chest and the warmth of her fur as a calm feeling swept over her and the crying eased. And Bonnie, well, Bonnie just buzzed away contentedly, enjoying the cuddle and letting Lil hold her as long as she needed. And ever since then, Bonnie has just been there, sensing when Lil needed a cuddle and when she didn't. And that's what's happening here. Lil went to the picnic, but it all just got a bit too much. So she moved away for some space and there was Bonnie, as always, within arm's reach, ready for a cuddle as needed. So this sweet story of Bonnie and Lil, I can't actually take credit for it because it's not completely from my imagination. You see, Bonnie the Bee is based on Bonnie our dog. She's a golden retriever who started her first two years of life being raised and trained as a seeing eye dog. But her destiny as a guide dog was not to be, and she ended up being a companion dog for my son. My son, whose name is not Lil, well, basically, the big wide world for someone like him can be extremely overwhelming. And when it's all too much and no one can help him feel calm, Bonnie is there. She is the calm in his storm and reaches him in a way no one else can. And so this picture and story is for the two of them and for all those who share a special bond with their dog. Throughout this drawing, I've aimed for a very cartoony, whimsical look, experimenting with the markers and the way I drew the tree, bushes, grass and sky. And I rather like where I've gone with it. It's not perfect by any means, but I'm keen to keep drawing this way and refine it more in the future. I'm still developing my own personal style and I like the direction this drawing has taken me. Admittedly, it's a little intimidating knowing the talented artists that will be contributing to this book and how my little picture will compare against everyone else's artworks, but that's okay. As long as I'm having fun and creating art with stories, I'm pretty happy. And this piece makes me feel good. As for the book, this is just one of 101 artworks that will be done in this book. I'm just one of 51 artists that will be holding this book. While I'm only doing this one prompt myself, because I did the cover as well, all the other creators will do two artworks. I'm going to be sending this book to Rose Requin Crafts first. I will pick a prompt for her to do, then she will do a prompt of her choice. Then Rose will send the book on. I won't spoil who will get it after her. Rose will choose a prompt for that artist and they will do a prompt of their choice. And so the book will continue on around the world, visiting creators, getting filled with awesome artworks. All that's left to do is put in the final details, like the drips of honey and all the mushroom faces. Finally, with the drawing all finished, I get to do the satisfying washi tape peel. Plus, I do a little honeycomb design and write the prompt on it and stick it all into the book. I've got to say though, it was hard cutting my artwork in half, but in order to keep the book from getting too bulky, I needed to do it. Not a masterpiece, but I am very fond of Lil and Bonnie and this cute little scene.
my part of this project is done. So it's time to hand it over to Rose Requin Crafts. Here you go, Rose. Got it. Thanks, Di. Please head over to Rose Requin Crafts right now. I'm gonna link her channel down below. Subscribe to her, hit the notification bell because you are not gonna wanna miss the journey this book will take. It's gonna go to some channels you already know and love, but it's also going to some channels that you might not have seen before, but I promise you're gonna get hooked and love them just as much as I do. You might also consider subscribing to me if you're not already and turn on that notification bell because I'm going to create a playlist right here on my channel. Plus I will be providing regular updates of where the book is going, where the book has been, and every time there is a new video out. If you can't hear it in my voice, I am super pumped about this project. And behind the scenes, all the collaborators are chatting to each other and the vibe is super positive. We are all excited to be working together on this project and share with the art community and take you all along with us. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to Rose's channel, get going, no time like the present. Go on, what are you still doing here? Go!